How can you be this and be racist? Literally, you are the strongest racist versus the weakest black man. He'd knock your shit off. Oh my God, Mr. Mc... My dad's a lawyer back here. Shut the f up. You lost hundreds of years ago. Why are you here? It's Sludge Life. We played it recently. Really good. Hello, Speed Train. You don't have to watch it all. Okay. But God, watching this video, I was so reminded of your story and how I almost fell down. Oh, yeah. We got to watch it then. We got to watch it then. Oh, sh okay. Racism, anti Semitism, sexism, transphobia, fascism, violence mass shootings abuse and harassment so a family friendly video i i've heard about this video before this video single-handedly has pulled people out of it this video is just about the alt-right playbook how to radicalize a normie like this is about the alt-right pipeline that sucks vulnerable white teenage boys in makes them angry at the world makes them blame all their problems on minorities and shit you can see that it's still a very topical video considering this say for the sake of argument your friend gabe is starting to worry you gabe's always been just you know, a, a regular guy, not very political. He likes video games, you know, sci-fi, comics, SCP Star Wars, and wants, anime. Check out White SCP guy shit. The action. only offbeat thing about Makes him is you suspect there's like okay. a 20% chance he's a furry. For all intents and purposes, Gabe is a normie. But recently, Gabe's been <clears throat> spending a lot of time on some radically yeah. conservative forums yeah. and listening to radically conservative podcasts and picking some radically conservative arguments with you and your friends. You never would have expected this, not from <clears throat> Gabe. And given the speed it's happened, it's worrying to think where it might be headed. How have the alt-right gotten their hooks into your friend? If you've ever known a Gabe, <clears throat> this video's for you. Here's how to radicalize a normie. Step one, identify the audience. What you need to know before we begin is around 2013, the Nazis went online. Hate groups in the U.S. as tracked by the Southern Poverty Law Center had been growing in number since the knots, but between 2012 and 2014, they dropped by almost a quarter. Patriot groups dropped by over a third. However, hate crimes stayed about the same. Radical conservatism was not shrinking, but decentralizing. Still radical and still often violent, but now full of white nationalist nomads unlikely to join a formal organization. This didn't make them harmless. What it did was protect their asses from the typical hate group cycle of getting the public's attention, making allies in conservative media, swelling their numbers, and then eventually disgracing themselves with failures in fighting and, often enough, members committing horrific acts of violence, which come with social and sometimes legal consequences for all the other members. All right, I'm already very, very sucked into this video. And their fellow travelers these days don't so much have me. this fucking guy right here let me just say this man this fucking gay conservative man is one of the single reasons i was racist that guy is milo yiannopoulos and he is a fucking transphobe somehow a goddamn homophobe and a racist he's a disgusting bastard and he's the reason i was such a fucking problematic guy at 17 18 and 19. they have hashtags followers viewers and subscribers this insulates them from their own audience. If Gabe, as a member of that audience, were to go out and commit a crime on their behalf, there'd be little doubt they had a hand in radicalizing him, but it'd be very hard to claim they told him to do it. On some of these sites where Gabe spends hours and hours of his day, he's never created an account or left a comment. <clears throat> the people radicalizing him don't even know he's there. Mm -hmm. This distributed nature is what makes the alt-right and the movements connected to it unique. Yep. You may remember a notable proof of concept for this strategy. Doing almost everything online has, as compared with traditional hate movements, increased their reach and inoculated them from consequence. The trade-off is video game lack terms. of control. Video game and terms. And so we come to Gabe. Gabe exists at the intersection of the kinds of people the alt-right is looking for. Straight white cis men who feel emasculated by modern society, yep. primarily, though they do make exceptions. Yep. And the kinds of people who are vulnerable to recruitment. Gabe fits the first profile in that he got bullied in high school and often feels he has to hide his nerdy side for fear of getting ridiculed. The alt-right also has success with men who can't get laid, or recently got divorced, or feel anxious about an influx of non-white people in their community. These things can make one feel like less than the confident white man they are supposed to be. Oh, man. And it's the Dude, 
I mean, the second he said cis white men that feel emasculated by society, I just think back to how I was bullied in middle school, elementary, junior high, and high school, here and there. Cis white men who feel, or boys, who feel emasculated by society. And emasculated just means that you feel like your masculinity has been reduced. What were you bullied for? For being fat, for being gay, for being pudgy. It was so stupid, bro. But when you're a little kid and your world is this big, that shit hurts, man. One time a kid punched me in the face and stepped in the back of my head after he threw my cheese stick from the cafeteria on the floor of the school bus. And I remember that people gave me shit for that, like even when I was a junior in high school and he did that when I was in the fifth grade. It hurt my feelings a little bit. I felt emasculated by my peers. Of course my problem lies with the minorities. I will blame them for everything. And that is how you become racist thanks to the internet. Closest they will ever come to being minoritized. Regarding the second profile, it's important to know that Gabe is not categorically <clears throat> different from you or me. He's a cishet white dude. His problems are not unique. There's not a ton of research into the demography of the alt-right, but there may be a higher than average chance Gabe has a history of being abused or comes from a broken home. You don't know if that's true Who of are Gabe, my friends? he's never Band said. Kids. But most abuse survivors don't become Nazis. The things that make people like Gabe recruitable tend to be situational. It happens often during periods of transition, as dramatic as the death of a loved one, or as benign as moving to a new city. Things that make people ask big life questions. Gabe has concerns like economic precarity, not knowing his place in a changing world, stressful working conditions. In other words, Gabe is suffering under late capitalism, same as <laughs> And it's entirely plausible he could have gone down the path to becoming a leftist. Yep. Now, this is not to make an economic anxiety argument. The animating force of the far right is and always has been bigotry. But the alt-right targets Gabe by treating his economic anxiety as one of many things bigotry can be sold as a solution to. I was convinced that my family was poor because of all the Mexicans coming into Texas and taking our jobs. Our family's poor because there's no resources to pull people out of poverty in this country. Blame capitalism. Capitalism is to blame. It is their aim that when dissatisfied white men go looking for answers, they find the alt-right before they find us. Step two, establish a community. Were Gabe pledging an old school hate movement, there would probably be a recruiter to usher him into an existing community. But that's the kind of formalized interaction modern extremists tend to avoid. Online extremism has many points of entry and everybody's journey is unique. So like, rather than be comp- So that shit right there, this was not like a symbol of racism, but the little kitties on 4chan were like, let's make this symbol of racism by telling everyone it is. And then the people who didn't know that it was just a joke started using it as an ironic racist dog whistle. So it went from being a joke dog whistle to being how much can you joke about something before you are that thing? And no, it's not the circle game. The circle game is usually like doing it like, I don't know, somewhere like right here. And you've just looked at it, get fucked. The biggest reason it became a racism thing is because the dumb fucking retards that run CNN and Fox News in this country wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. The only reason it became a symbol is because as a result of the discourse of it's not a racist symbol, it is a racist symbol. Unknowing racists found out about it and said, yeah, I'll take it. That's my symbol now. Gabe is likely to stumble into or infiltrates a community Gabe is already in. The stumble upon method has two main branches, one of which is just Gabe ends up on a Chan board, which we've already done a video about. Says, the other is kind of so, the polar I mean, opposite of 4chan's cult of anonymity. Gabe ends up in the fandom of a far-right thought leader. Ah, These folks that was are me. charismatic. That was me. I ended up in, um, oh my fucking god! All four of them! Fuck! Sargon of Akkad, Paul Joseph Watson, Steven Crowder, and, um, Peter Dinklage. No, what's his name? Fuck, what's his name? Jordan Peterson. God damn it. These four men, the four horsemen of the right-wing apocalypse. And the, here's the thing, man. Jordan Peterson, at first, all his talks were just very helpful for a vulnerable teen like me. Jordan Peterson, his shit was just good for me until he started mingling with all these right-wing guys. He unintentionally plopped me in their laps, man. Fuck. He had genuinely good lectures. Listening to his lectures, I felt like I was learning shit. And Jordan Peterson just teaches you pseudo-philosophical shit that you'll like run into on your own in your 20s. But he feeds it to you at 15. Charismatic media personalities. That's charismatic according to Gabe's tastes, not ours. 
I don't understand it either. And these personalities may gain traction on any number of platforms, from podcasts to reportage to blogging, though the most effective platform for red pilling is, and yes, I am biting the hand that feeds me, YouTube. 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 They may YouTube. get Gabe's attention through fairly conventional means. YouTube just like feeds you what you want to watch, so it makes money. It doesn't know that it's turning you racist. Trending. While some of the more committed will employ dubious SEO tactics like clickbait, Google bombing, and data voids. But what they tend to have in common, especially the most accessible ones, is that they don't present themselves as entry points to the radical right. In fact, many did not set out to be far-right thought leaders and may not think of themselves as such, though they are often selling products of which the alt-right are among their biggest purchasers, and it's not like they're turning the money away. Yeah. So there's that. How they present is the same way anyone presents who wants to be successful on social media. Accessible. Approachable. Authentic. The face-to-face -face relationship a budding extremist forms with their recruiter or the leader of their hate group's local chapter are here folded into one parasocial relationship with a complete stranger. Mm -hmm. Why this person appeals to Gabe is they're not selling politics as politics, but conservatism as a kind of lifestyle brand. Yep. They rely heavily on critiquing or ridiculing the left. Feminists are oversensitive, black people unintelligent, queer folks doomed to loneliness, and trans people insane. Now, I don't know if it's a coincidence that these are all things Gabe thinks about himself in his low moments. By contrast, they don't sell conservatism as how he thinks about Wait, himself people in- who is that guy on the top left? Thunderfoot? I watched his electrical engineering videos, I think. He's right-leaning? Well, you know what, though? He does upload shit on the side that I don't give a fuck about. I respect your intelligence, but I don't give a fuck about your opinion. And that is a conclusion that people need to start coming to on their fucking own. Just because someone is an authority on a certain subject you like does not mean you need to know their fucking political affiliation. Insane. Now, I don't know if it's a coincidence that these are all things Gabe thinks about himself in his low moments. By contrast, they don't sell conservatism as having sounder policies or a more coherent moral framework, but that abandoning progressive yeah, principles and embracing conservative ones will make Gabe happier. Remember, Gabe isn't looking for white nationalism or misogyny. What he wants is the cure to his soul sickness. And these friendly micro-celebs are here to offer a shot of life advice with politics as the chaser. It is extremely important that politics be presented as a set of affects, not a set of beliefs. The second pathway is infiltration, I'm, I'm, which he's is its me. own beast. Media personalities sometimes become gateways to the right almost by accident. They do something edgy, a part of their audience reacts positively, and facing no real consequence, they do it more. This leads to further positive reinforcement from conservative fans, the rest of the audience acclimates, and the cycle repeats, the personality pushing the envelope further uh -oh. and further based on what flies with their increasingly conservative audience. In this way, they become a right-wing figure by both radicalizing and being radicalized by their audience. That absolutely happened to me. It was basically eye funny for me. Say racist thing, everyone applauds you. Do it again for more likes, I guess. Creation is deliberate. The far right will reliably target any community that has one, a large white male population, two, whose niche interests allow them to feel vaguely marginalized, and three, who are not used to progressive critique of said interest. This isn't to say progressive critique doesn't exist or hasn't been baked into the property from the beginning, but that it has been... The X-Men are a civil rights metaphor. It's not even fucking subtle. Yeah, that's true. So far, easy for white guys to ignore. As such, progressives within that community probably don't talk politics much. And women and minorities are perfectly welcome to post, same as anyone, but just, you know, don't... Don't make identity politics, you know, like, a thing. Given Gabe's proclivities, he's probably already in a number of fan communities where he can geek out and not get teased. And this is where the far right will go looking for him. Communities are at their most vulnerable to infiltration at times of political discord. This can discord? happen naturally. Say, a new property in the fandom has a black protagonist. Or it can be provoked. Say, a bunch of channers join the forum and say provocative things about race to get people arguing or both. Left to its own devices, the community might sort out its differences and maybe even come out more what progressive than they started. Playbook. Playbook. But with the Fuck, right pressure applied right in the right moment, 
these communities can devolve into arguments about the need to remove a nebulously defined politics from the conversation. The adage about bros on the internet is political means anything I disagree with. But it would be more accurate to say here, political means anything on which the community disagree. That's true. Chat, have you noticed that over the past few months, I'm more and more open about how I think landlords are shit, the government, our economy, capitalism is a little bit of a scam. You noticed? It's because resoundingly, you guys kind of all agree with me a little bit. Me saying that capitalism is a scam is no longer a political statement, it's an objective fact, right? Because you all kind of agree with me somewhat. Not all of you, but those of you that talk in chat. You radicalize me by spamming based and based, based but true, yep, notters, like things like that. Nazis are bad is an apolitical statement because everyone in the community agrees. It's common sense and therefore neutral. But paradoxically, Nazis are good is also apolitical. Because Nazis are bad is the consensus, Nazis are good must just be an edgy joke. And even if not, the community already believes the opposite, so the statement is harmless, tolerable. However, feminism is good, is a political statement ah. because the community hasn't reached a consensus. Mm. It is debatable and therefore political, and you should stop talking about it. And making political arguments, no matter how rational, is having an agenda, and having an agenda is ruining the community. Now, it is curious how the things that provoke the most disagreement tend to be whichever ones make white dudes uncomfortable, one of life's great unanswerable mysteries. You can gather where this is going. A community that doesn't tolerate progressivism, but does tolerate Nazism, is going to start collecting Nazis. Nazis whose goal is to drive a wedge between the community and the left. Once the left acknowledges, hey, your community's developing a Nazi problem, the Nazis, who are, remember, trusted apolitical members of the community who might just be kidding about all the Nazi shit, I mean, they're say, joking. did you hear that, guys? Those cultural Marxists just called all of us Nazis wedge. Similarly, any community members who say, but Nazis though, are framed as infiltrators pushing an agenda, even if they've been there longer than the Nazis have. They get the wedge too. Yeah. This is how fandoms radicalize. They are built as, yeah, I'll say it, safe spaces for nerds, weebs, and furries, and are told that the left is a threat to their safety. And given a choice between leaving a community that has mattered to him for years, Wow, we're only 12 minutes in. This is how a lot of us in stream right now got sucked in. This is how I got sucked in. This is how a lot of my friends got sucked in. This is how it happens. And simply adjusting to the community's shifting politics, the assumption is that Gabe will stay. This assumption is right often enough that a lot of fandoms have been colonized. What is true of both these methods, Gabe finding the right or the right finding him, is that Gabe does not come nor stay for the ideology. He's here for the community, the sense of being with his people, of having his fears validated and his enjoyment shared. The ideology is simply the price of admission. Step three, isolate. <clears throat> How can I help those around me from being radicalized? I don't know, send them this video, dude. It's hard to stop someone from getting radicalized. They're, they're probably gonna get radicalized. Why are white men so easily radicalized? Because we have such high expectations for ourselves. The reason straight white men are radicalized is because in our culture, we are the heroes because we write the history books. Straight white men are the most heroic and brave and noble people in the world as far as we are concerned, right? So we have super high expectations for ourselves. And the minute we feel emasculated in any sense, we self-radicalize in any which way. We become incels, we become angry, we reach out with hate in our hearts, we become racist, and then we get sucked into an all right pipeline and we either get spat out a Nazi or a femboy. There's no in between. There is a vast, interconnected network of far-right communities out there, and Gabe is, at this point, only on the periphery. In order to keep him in, they need to disrupt his relationships to other communities and become more and more his primary online social space. Having made this space hostile to the left, they now seek to break his connections to progressives elsewhere in his life. This is hard to do online. The whole appeal of moving radicalism to the internet is that your away from keyboard life doesn't have to change. You are crypto the moment you log off. Some thought leaders will encourage their audience to cut ties with family of origin, or defoo, 
But even then, they can't monitor whether the audience has actually done it in the way an in-person movement could. And so alienating Gabe. The relationship between the alt-right and femboys is that typically people with alt-right ideologies are vulnerable, emasculate, insecure people. And they're insecure because they have traits about themselves that they despise in others. By coming to terms with it, it's usually internalized homophobia against themselves. I mean, it's something as small as fucking weeb phobia. I pretended to hate weebs so much. And it's because I had an interest in anime and I was insecure about it. I didn't want to get made fun of. So I fought that urge by making fun of people for liking anime from the left is less controlled it, it's and true. consequently maybe less total how much Me game with my fetishes yes is up to him but the vast majority of far-right media presumes an alienation from the left part of conservative bloggers and youtubers making the left look pathetic is doing a lot of takedowns and responses this is a constant repetition of the left's arguments for the purpose of mockery and for Gabe, it starts to replace any engagement with progressive Bang games. Game thirty-three months. He soon knows the left only so through can tell caricature, three months. Rat but also trains four months. him if he does hard, directly engage to GFHL, approach the left with months. the Gecko, same combative stance as his role models. For reference, see my SCP comment section. In action. And this is only if he doesn't partake in one of the many active boycotts of SJW media. In addition to mocking the left's arguments, they also, curiously appropriate them. This is one part sanitization because liberal centrism is more socially acceptable. Indeed, many figures on the outer layers think of themselves as moderates even as they serve as gateways to radicalism. But also, many of Gabe's problems could be addressed by progressive leftism. Yes! So they sell him racist and sexist versions of it. Yes! Yes, there is a problem with workers being underpaid and overextended, but the solution isn't unions, it's deporting immigrants. Yep! Yes, there is a chronic loneliness and anger to being a man in the modern age, but it's not because of the toxic masculine expectations placed on you by the patriarchy, it's women being slutty. Yes, wealth disparity does mean a tiny percentage of elites have more influence over culture and politics than the rest of us combined, but the problem isn't capitalism. It's the Jews. And it's hard for Gabe to... I can't believe that's what people buy in on as well. That's what people buy in on. And the thing is, the anti-Semitic reasoning behind why the Jews are ruining the world is still based on capitalism. You're just acknowledging the problem in a racist way. The right's take the red pill is to the untrained eye similar to the left's get woke or at least the bowdlerized version of Get Woke that is no longer specifically about race, which came to fashion once white people started saying it. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Take True, the red I pill guess. or I know reject them both. Either is a step to the right. As this rhetoric slips into his day-to-day -day conversation, even as seemingly harmless irreverence, it may strain relationships with people who are not entertained by this shit. Off-color comments about race and gender can certainly be wearying for female and non-white friends, which can lead to a passive distance or an eventual confrontation, okay. which only seems to... A red pill, a reference to the Matrix. He goes into the Matrix, he finds Neo, and he says, all right, take these two pills. The red pill allows you to wake up from the simulation and see the real world. The blue pill, you take it and you forget that we ever met and you live your life oblivious inside of the simulation. The red pill is just a way of saying, oh, you see the world for what it really is. You've learned the truth. Yeah, nothing is your fault. It's all the other people that aren't the same color as you. I don't know. Confirm what his reactionary community says about liberal snowflakes. <clears throat> If he says these things on social media, he may get his account suspended. And if he comes back under an alt, you can bet his new reactionary friends will be the first to reconnect, applaud the behavior that got him banned, and repeat should he get banned again. Yep. A few cycles of this, and he's lost touch with everyone else. Also, his adoption of the insular, meme-laden terminology of his community makes him less and less comprehensible Chatelet, to outsiders. my brother, top keck. Over time, Jesus. sources of information get replaced with community-approved ones. Yep. Conservative news, conservative YouTube, yep. conservative Wikipedia, if yep. he's really committed. The algorithm soon takes note and stops recommending media from the left. He stops watching shows with a liberal agenda, which usually means shows starring women and people of color. 
Now, there is evidence that the human mind responds to fictional characters similarly to real people, and that consuming diverse media can decrease bigotry in ways roughly analogous to having a diverse group of friends, which is one of many reasons we say representation matters. It's true. By consuming a homogenous... It's true. It's, it's literally... People say, oh, representation doesn't fucking matter. You should be able to put yourself in anyone else's shoes. Okay, well, that's just false. Like, this is not how your brain works. You ever notice how the guy that hangs out with a bunch of different colored people just isn't racist yeah it's called diversifying your fucking social input you dingus homogenous media diet gabe stymies his ability to have even parasocial relationships with anyone who isn't a cishet conservative white dude or one of their approved exceptions to the extent that any of this happens it happens at Gabe's discretion and at his own chosen pace. It has not been forced on him, only encouraged and rewarded. But the fact that it hasn't been forced can make him all the more Chris Reagan to and Lacey, that was, because that was it a seems combo. safe to consider. When Even though found his out, life we and social like, circle are changing to accommodate, he does not feel committed. But many Gabes have walked these halls, and if they close the door behind them, there is nowhere left to go but down. Step four, raise their power level. Yep. And they say we ruined anime. <laughs> Consider the ecosystem of the alt-right as layers of an onion, with Gabe sitting at the edge and ready to traverse towards the center. No, I'm not just going to reiterate the PewDiePie pipeline, though if you haven't seen it, I recommend that you do. The outer layer of the onion is extremism at its most plausibly deniable. Without careful scrutiny, the public-facing figureheads could pass as dispassionate, and the websites as merely problematic rather than softly fascist. It is valuable if Gabe believes this as well, that at this stage, he believed the bigotry is simply trolling, the extremists an insignificant minority, and any report of harassment faked. That he believe where he is is as deep as the rabbit hole goes, and that he continue to believe this at each successive layer. People in the deepest crevices of the alt-right self-report getting red-pilled on multiple issues at different times in their journey to the center of the onion. If Gabe's first red pill is about the SJWs, this video, this fucking video did it. All he's doing is arguing with a bunch of unprepared debaters. That's all they ever do. All they ever fucking do is argue with people who are unprepared, unknowledgeable on their subjects and unable to control their own emotions once they get heated. That's all they ever do. And I was like, wow, people who are conservative are so smart. Talk fast and hope they don't notice. Yeah, for the sake of argument, let's just say hypothetically, shut up is coming for his free speech, he'll think that's all anyone in his community believes. There's no real racism here, people are just making a point about their right to offend people. Then, when he gets red-pilled on the white genocide, he'll laugh at those alt-light cucks who tried to sweep the race realists under the rug, and at himself for having once been one, but acknowledge that those channels and websites are still useful for onboarding people, so he won't denounce them. At the same time, nobody takes those manosphere betas seriously. And this process is reiterated with every pill swallowed. Gender essentialism, autogynephilia, birtherism, Sandy Hook truth, Pizzagate, QAnon if he's really out there. The heart of the onion. That's how deep I got. That's This is where I stopped, right here. That's where I stopped. Thank you, Alex Jones. Pizzagate, they thought this fucking pizza place in New York had a child pedophile rape dungeon under it. And a guy went there with a gun trying to find where they were hiding all the children so he could save them. I was like, look at these fucking emails. They keep saying cheese pizza. Like what is cheese pizza short for? That's CP. They want cheese pizza in the hot tub. Like, what does that mean? That obviously they're raping children. That's the fucking Pizzagate thing. Is typically the Jewish question, but these can happen in any order and in any number. But each layer sells itself as being finally the ultimate truth. Each denies the validity of the others. The layers ahead, they don't exist, and you are certainly not being directed towards them. They're just the fevered imaginations of overreacting liberals. While the people behind are asleep, where you are now awake. Yep. That's why they chose the red pill as their metaphor. Take it, and everything will be revealed. That's why it cozies up with conspiracism. But what's supposed to follow is that this knowledge helped Gabe seat. in some way, and it doesn't. Hey, Blaming immigrants doesn't actually fix the economy, and hating women doesn't make men less lonely. 
But having been alienated from everything outside the onion, once that sinks in, the only recourse on offer is to seek out the next pill. And pills are easy to find. Those within the network have laissez-faire relationships, even if they on paper disavow one another. When they need a source or a guest host, they aren't going to go to the left. They're going to feature each other. The left is the enemy. Their ideas are beneath consideration, and the only reason to engage them is for public this shit is so cringe. How to debate leftists and destroy them. 10 rules for winning the argument. So fucking cringe, dude. Does Ben Shapiro know he's autistic? He doesn't understand metaphors. He doesn't understand euphemisms and metaphors. I've never heard of a woman having a, 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 a wet ass P word. I've never heard of a woman having this before. Is this a, a medical condition? You know, my wife is a doctor. Let me call her on the phone and ask her. Just got off the phone with my wife. My wife has never had an issue with her, with her, with her, with her, with her water production. It's not an issue. Th these, you know, these, this liberal media, it's, it's off the walls. It's, 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 it's like, what? Put the violin back in his hands. He was good when he was just on the fucking violin. Like humiliation. <sighs> But you can interview a Western chauvinist, and that doesn't mean you're endorsing him. Oh, Just, microphone. You know, it's fine to hear him out. Nothing should be off limits in the marketplace of ideas. Besides, Nazis are apolitical. Yeah. And because these folks keep showing up in each other's metadata, regardless of what they say, Google thinks there is definitely a relationship between the guy just asking questions and the guy denying the Holocaust. Gabe is softly exposed to many flavors of conservatism, just slightly more radical than he is now, and is expected, at the very least, to not question their presence. This is an environment where de-radicalizing, listening to the left, would be sleeping with the enemy. But radicalizing further? Eh, you do you, buddy. Gabe's emotional journey, however, is somewhat more complex. If you spend any time reading or watching reactionary media, you've probably noticed it's really... Chat, reactionary media is just that shit you watch, that shitting on the shit that you read in the news this morning, and it's all shit. If you saw some shit in the news and you go watch some shit about how shit the shit is, you're just making yourself more upset. There's no reason to do it. Stop locking on the internet to be mad for hours on end. Get on, look at a picture of a fucking cat like we did in 2006. Be happy. Play Doom Eternal. It's on my to-do list. Fucking... Fucking. Repetitive. It's a few thousand phrasings of the same handful of arguments. Like, there's only so many jokes about attack helicopters. <laughs> but these people just crank out content, and most of it's derivative. The reason to pick one personality over another isn't because they say something different, but because they say it differently. Gabe just picks the affect it's delivered in. Repetition dulls the shock of the most egregious statements, making them appear normal and prepping him for more extreme ideas. Meanwhile, the arguments themselves? They're not... good? Like, BreadTube will never run out of shit to debunk. They are repetitive because they're not good. They're mantric. A good argument you only need to hear one time. If you can follow it, internalize it, and explain it to someone else, you know you've understood it. But a bad argument can't convince you on its own merits, so it will often rely on affect. This can be the snappy, thought-terminating cliché, or the long, winding diatribe. <clears throat> Facts don't care about your feelings, is what it says right behind me. Holy shit. I think that your sense of meaningful engagement with what you're doing is the psychophysiological marker that you're acting in a way that takes all of the stacked representations into account simultaneously. That's a whole lot of nothing. I used to think that the bigger words I use and the more of them that I use in a sentence, the more complicated my grammar was, meant that I was smarter. If I'm able to outsmart them using words, which are tools that we both have, it's an even playing field, right? Drive that sounds really sensible. Because you're trying to figure out where you are and you might think, well, that means where I am in this room. But look, this room is not a simple thing, right? It's nested. It's a subset of the university. That subset, that's a subset of society. That's a subset of your life. This room is a complicated thing and you need to figure out where you should be in the room. And you can't do that surely with perception. This is some shit that Jordan Peterson would say. He has these well, long drawn out it, metaphors. When someone asks you for the gist, you can only say, go watch these 17 videos and it'll all make sense. It's I'm 14 and this is deep. It's shit that if you think about it long enough, you can grasp it and it tricks you into thinking that because you can grasp it, that it's the undeniable truth and that you are smarter for knowing it. Both these approaches are largely devoid of content. Exactly. But gosh, if they don't sound sure of themselves. They do. And that mode can be very persuasive. The smug face argument. stick the way a coherent argument does. Yeah. It needs to be repeated. The yeah. affect replenished. 
because the words matter less. They need to be able to be smug delivery. as fuck all the time. There needs to be a steady stream of confident voices saying, we've got this shit figured out and everyone else is stupid, or Gabe's going to notice the flaws. They are not well hidden. And the catch-22 of returning to that stream over and over is that these communities are stressful even as they are calming. People afraid they will die virgins go to forums with people who share and validate that fear and also say, yes, you will die a virgin. People afraid Syrians are coming to kill us all watch videos by people who share and validate that fear and also say, yes, Syrians are coming to kill us all. Oh Others gosh. have already pointed out that rubbing your face in your worst anxieties is a form of digital self-harm. But I need you to understand the, the four months. Kemgi, 37 months. Gabe is going to these communities to get upset. Every Im And that's, I, I just told you guys that a minute ago, but he just said it. Stop getting online just to be upset. Twitter is the reason we have so many young radical leftists who think that, okay, if we just cancel anyone and everyone for anything and everything, then we'll be good. Society will be amazing. We'll have flying cars, perfect utopia. No, you're doing exactly what the little racist white boys do on fucking 4chan and 8chan and the goddamn black pill. You're doing the exact same thing, just the left version of it. We need to take the internet away from children, I think. I think we should. I think it would be good for them in their mental health. Emotion is converted into anger because sadness, fear, and despair are paralyzing, but anger is motivating. Whatever his problems, there's always someone he can scapegoat for them, and Gabe feels less helpless when he's pissed off. And so while he's topping up on reassuring nonsense, he's also topping up on stress. And being cut off from everyone outside the network, the only place he knows to go to release that stress is back to the place that gives it to him. It's a feedback loop, pulling him deeper and deeper on the promise that, at some point, relief will come. It is a similar dynamic that keeps people in abusive relationships. Yep. When someone in Gabe's community makes a racist joke, they are presenting Gabe with a choice between the human interaction of laughing with his friends and his societal responsibility not to be a fucking racist. Yep. And not laughing seems ridiculous. Yep. Everybody's friends here. No one's getting hurt. This is harmless. Yeah. And so the irreverent race joke draws a line between the personal and the political yep. and suggests that one can be safely prioritized over the other. One way to look at radicalization is being asked to stick with that seemingly innocuous decision as the stakes are raised incrementally. Let's say you are hanging out with a bad group of friends and you recognize that you are participating in a little bit too much tomfoolery. Let's say you're 16. You shouldn't be doing drugs and drinking at 16, but your friends like to do it and they like to do it a lot. You know that it's a bad thing, but you're having too much fun doing it because they're your close friends. Your parents tell you that you need to stop hanging out with these bad influences. And while you do agree with it, you don't want to because you have close personal relationships with these people. It is too much of an emotional burden to seek out a new friend group and try to reintegrate. So why not just stay a member of the group that is the bad influence on you? It's the same thing on a much more grand scale and people don't see that. First with edgier humor and then comments that are funny because they're shocking but you couldn't really call them jokes. It's like screaming and the n-word in a discord funny call. Funny comments that are also sincerely. Hey um l l sorry I keep I keep pausing. This movie right here such a fucking good movie. American History X a banger movie. Really 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 good. It's an emotional roller coaster. Such a good movie. I highly recommend it. It is not a pro-nazi movie. I should say that. Really angry. But in each instance, since he laughed with his bros the last time, it stands to reason he should keep favoring the personal over some abstracted notion of politics. This is why the progressive adage, the personal is political, is among the most threatening things you can say in these spaces. Yeah, uh, how not could you watch American History X and want to be a Nazi? Argument. Most of us who laughed at edgy jokes when we were teenagers didn't grow up to be Nazis. It is a slippery slope in the specific context of being in community with people trying to radicalize you. Gabe. Sorry about that movie. If you watch the first 15, 20 minutes of that movie, you could see like, oh, this is a pro-Nazi movie. So if the Nazis are out there using that movie as like their symbol, like, oh, this is such a good movie. Only watch the first 15 to 20 minutes though. The movie is about a man's journey away from being a member of the Aryan Brotherhood after having to serve so much time in prison. Well, he gets kind of soap in the shower momented. 
in that movie, if you know what I mean. And it's a movie about realizing that this hate that was supposed to bring me a, a sense of camaraderie in life actually has done nothing for me. Or the poetic irony of that movie is that the hate came back, yeah, to fuck you in the butt. Lonely white boy in need of friends and <laughs> laughing at a racist joke is personal and not laughing is political. Staying in a community that has Nazis in it is personal and leaving is political. The personal is what brings people together and the political drives them apart. The Stop joking only about some your of age. them are bigots part of that sentence is usually lopped off. There's this joke on the internet that nerds perceive only Stop joking about your age, we actually have to ban you. Two races, white and political. Following that logic, what could be more apolitical than an ethnostate? They are banking on his willingness to adapt his beliefs to suit an environment that meets a need. That same need can be satisfied by white nationalism. There are few things more seductive to people who doubt their own worth than being told, you are valuable simply for being white. And you can sub in male, cis, straight, allosexual, or able-bodied. It just takes priming. By the time Gabe officially embraces bigotry, he's already been acting like a bigot for months. The red pill is just the moment he says it out loud. Change Gabe's surroundings, and you change Gabe. Step five. Jesus. The final step in a traditional ex off as a bunch of unaffiliated hashtags and think tanks. You are now a formalized movement accountable to its followers and can be judged and policed as such. To my mind, Charlottesville was an attempt to become such a movement, taking things offline and getting... I know seven or eight motherfuckers that look just like this. How can you be this and be racist? Literally, you are the strongest racist versus the weakest black man. He'd knock your shit off. I don't understand how you can look like this and be racist. This guy got a little bit of good RNG. He has a tank build, but he is a Floridian. He's not bulletproof. I don't care. This kid right here. What the fuck are you doing here? Ranger Dan? What the fuck are you doing? Oh my God, Mr. Mc... My dad's a lawyer back here. Shut the fuck up. This guy, how are you 30 and 16 at the same time? Get the fuck out of here. You lost hundreds of years ago. Why are you here? Especially Namaste. with no official leaders and no means of control over the All members, right. it backfired. Their true colors came out before they were ready. Oh, man. And, counter -protester and then people were life. like, oh, it's because they were in the road. This would be really? the point where historically really? an extremist group starts to disintegrate. Seriously? Their veneer of respectability gone, they are now hated by the public, the media wants nothing more to do with them, and everyone not in jail turns on each other or goes underground. Yep. This is also the point where the liberal establishment says, my job here is done, and utterly fails to retake control of the narrative, allowing the next batch of radicals <laughs> to pick up more or less where the last one left. Off. It's true, honestly. But to an already decentralized group like the alt-right, Charlottesville was bad, but... This shit is what makes me sad. No offense to this guy, but I guarantee you he's uneducated, right? Uneducated fucking boomers subscribing to this new wave of conservative media, getting sold on it, wearing their fucking merch to a, a KKK rally, essentially. Eminently survivable. People retreated back to the internet with its code words and anonymous forums, but that's where much of the work was already done anyway. The platforms where they organized kept tolerating them, the authorities didn't classify them as terrorists, and any disgraced figureheads were replaced with up-and-comers. The major change- Wow, what a fucking dinner table that is. And I guarantee you they didn't tip. <laughs> the strategy Holy is shit. that it doesn't seem anyone has tried to formalize the alt-right since. So where does that leave Gabe? He's gone through this whole process of largely hands-off indoctrination. And I should stress, his journey may look like what we've outlined here, or it may look different in places. This video is not comprehensive. <clears throat> you can hear the but soy now he's in this dude's voice. Every pill he okay, I don't, I don't want to be that guy. You can hear the soy in this dude's voice. Uh, okay. I'd love to hear what you sound like. No offense, but I'm sure you sound like a little bitch. No offense. But yeah, some guys have higher pitch voices. Some guys sound nasally. Not every guy can get on the mic and sound like me. You're listening to Magic 96.5 Radio. Not every guy can sound like me on the fucking mic my man for everything he sees as wrong with the world some guys no sound like normal anything dudes to do you've got this ad hoc movement frothing young men into a militant fervor and then just leaving them to stew in their own hate should we really be surprised at how many commit mass shootings this is a machine for producing lone wolves Leaving men to take up arms of their own volition is a way of enacting terror while being just outside the popular conception of a terror cell. 
There are also, of course, more classic <laughs> militias that offer Gabe clear directives. They are recruiting from the same pool. And Gabe may stop short of this, settling in a middle layer sorry. that suits him, or finding the inner layers too I extreme. I am sorry. But violence is the logical conclusion of an ideology of hate. And should Gabe take this step, he can approach violence in the same incremental fashion. Are you like fashion. five foot eight? He I'm actually, yes, I'm a short man. He I'm five foot ten. With I'm very short. On Twitter. But if you, and if you would like to fight me, I will gladly. DDoS attacks. Are you bulletproof docs, is my question. Leaking nudes, calling their phone numbers, texting them pictures of their houses from the sidewalk. These acts of cruelty become games of one-upmanship within his community. All this can start as far back as step two and get more intense the deeper he goes. And some people join explicitly to partake in harassment and violence the way Gabe joined to talk about anime. But this behavior can serve as a kind of buy-in. The left and the feminists and the LGBTQs and the Muslims and the immigrants are all within his community subhuman. You've maybe heard the conservative catchphrase, feminism is cancer. Oh, well, you don't treat cancer by having a respectful exchange of ideas with it but by eradicating it down to the last cell. Cruelty against the left is framed as necessary and righteous. From any other perspective, posting someone's bank information is something you might feel ashamed of, which creates a psychological imperative not to consider other perspectives. A thing that keeps people in is staving off the guilt they will reckon with the moment they step out. Gabe is also aware that anything he's done to the left could yeah. be done to him if yeah. he leaves. Some communities even keep docs on their members as insurance. And the things he's encouraged to do to the left will likely make him feel that the left would never take him now. The radical right is the only home he's got. Harassment becomes another tool of isolation. Mm -hmm. Steadily, options for Gabe are whittled down to being a vigilante or a nihilist. There are periods of elation, moments the all- It's so funny that he used that villain. This video came out in 2019. Before we ever said shit like, oh, they're having their Joker arc. Oh, here comes their Joker moment. Good moments moment the alt-right feels it's winning, or more accurately, the people they hate are losing, are like cocaine. They are authoritarians after all. But the times in between are mean and People haven't angry. always said that, no. They are antisocial, starved of emotional connection, consuming incompatible conspiracies that yep. may at any point run them afoul of one another, yep. devoted to figureheads who cater to but cannot risk leading them, and living under constant threat of being outed to the left or turned on by the right for stepping out of line. Mm. Gabe took this journey for the sense of community and purpose. And but for the rare moments everything goes their way, the alt-right can't maintain either. They can only keep promising his day will come, a story he could get from a $5 palm reading. The feeling there's nothing left but to kill yourself or someone else is so common, it's a meme. But there is a third option. Gabe can leave. Pre-conclusion, for fuck's sake do not make Gabe your whole ass praxis. Before we continue, I want to state plainly that Gabe went off the deep end because he found a community willing to tell him that because he is a cishet white man, the world revolves around him. Do not treat him like this is true. If a fraction of the energy spent having debates with America's Gabes were spent instead on voter reenfranchisement, prisoners' rights, protections for immigrants, statehood for DC, and redistricting, Gabe's opinions, in the societal sense, wouldn't matter. Reactionary mm -hmm. conservatism is a small and largely unpopular ideology that is only so represented in our culture and politics because they've learned how to game the system. They've learned how to make it seem like their problems that they think are problems are massive fucking problems and they try to convince others that it's a problem that affects everyone when it's not even a problem that fucking exists. That's the thing. They don't actually have a whole lot of real tangible points. They're just a little tiny crowd with a big old fucking megaphone. Yeah, transgendered bathrooms, abortions like in the first fucking trimester, shit like that. And I get it. Those are huge problems that are gonna take years to address where if you know a Gabe, that's a conversation you could have today. And if you think you can get through to him, it's worthwhile to try. This is a fight on many fronts and de-radicalization is one of them. Mm -hmm. But it is only one. So please keep it in perspective. It sends an awful message when we spend more time trying to get bigots back on our side than we do the people they are bigoted against. 
Your value as a lefty does not hinge on whether you can change Gabe's mind. Conclusion. How Gabe gets out. He may just grow out of it. This is important. These communities skew young, and some folks hit a point where hanging out with edgy teens doesn't feel cool anymore. That's what it was for me. Literally all it was, really. Like at some point, it just didn't feel cool being edgy. I just didn't feel like I belonged. I felt too old to be hanging out with 14 year olds, 13 year olds in Discord. I, I'm like, I'm 18. I'm, I'm too old to be hanging out with these little kids that scream the N word. He may become disillusioned after the movement fails to deliver on its many promises. That's, that's He may also become disillusioned if something goes wrong in his life and his community isn't there for him. Yep. If he feels they like his race and his gender, but don't actually care about him. He may be shocked if he sees the alt-right at its worst before being appropriately conditioned. Charlottesville was a step too far for a lot of people. His community may turn on him for any perceived unorthodoxy, and he may leave out of necessity. Yep. He may be separated by circumstance from the community, a trip with no internet, hospitalization, arrest, and not be able to top up on the rhetoric. This may lead him to question his beliefs. His community may disappear, either tearing itself apart or getting shut down by authorities. Which should be a fucking red flag, right? Like, your favorite fucking forum gets shut down by the FBI? Shouldn't that be a goddamn wake-up call? May have incidental contact with populations he is supposed to hate, and have trouble reconciling who they are in person that was, with what he's been told about them. That was his, another one. For me, I met my first ever transgender person, my first ever asexual person. I made friends with brown and black people, and I was like, wow, these are not the people that I read about on my very long three threads about race on a very obscure phone app. These are normal people with some shared values as me. Huh, interesting. This community people bond over my shared face. intolerance, but suddenly being tolerant helps him make friends. This is one reason the alt-right has made a battleground of the liberal arts college campus. He may form or revisit relationships outside the network, people who can offer him the connection he's been looking for. This may reintroduce outside perspectives, but more importantly, it rekindles his ability to have healthy relationships at all, something the alt-right has estranged him from. As with recruiters, it seems these escape hatch relationships can sometimes Hedonism? be parasocial, Hedonism? coming to respect a public figure what are we, who in the is fucking on evil, the left uh, or is critical of the alt -right. the is... Someone he is close to may compel him to choose, me or the movement. A lot of young men leave to save a romantic relationship. Hedonism? Hearing stories from people who've already jumped may help. There aren't a lot of public formers, and some raise questions as to their sincerity, but it is getting more common, and maybe the closest we get to exit counseling for the alt-right. He may become aware of the ways he's being manipulated, or- I remember Philosophy Tube. Back in the day, Philosophy Tube was like very, hmm, yes, I am racist. <laughs> not, not really, not as hard as other channels, but now Philosophy Tube is like, hmm, what is this feeling? I like black people now? Or have them revealed to him, maybe because he stumbled into BreadTube, I don't know. Knowledge that you are being indoctrinated is no guarantee it won't work. You are not immune to propaganda, but it can help one resist. And he may revisit a core belief system that used to guide him, be it religion or social justice, or a really wholesome fandom, and be reminded of the identity he used to have. Moments like these, in isolation or in aggregate, can inspire Gabe to jump. They are also good times for friends to intervene. Yep. The reach and the impunity that comes with the internet means it has never been easier to fall into reactionary conservatism. It has also never been easier to get out. People who exit skinhead gangs often fear for their lives. Yeah. For Gabe, there's a chance getting out is as simple as going to a different website. It's Much true. Much of his community does not know his name or his face, and he may not be important enough to dox. What doesn't get Gabe out, not reliably, not that I have seen, is an argument with a stranger who proves all his facts wrong and his ideology bunk. Facts don't always work because facts don't care about his feelings. This was about staying in a community and holding on to an identity. Isn't that funny how that talking point has been turned around? Identity ...that mattered to him. It was about belonging. And that is something a rando from the other side of the culture war can't give him and probably shouldn't be responsible for. The theme here is human connection. Before he can do the work of disentangling himself and facing the guilt of what he's believed and maybe done, he has to know there's something for him on the other end of it. That the right hasn't ruined him. They've told him all of history is groups fighting each other over status and that without his clan he'll be in exile. 
He needs a better story. I don't know that lefty spaces are ideal for this, in no small part because bringing someone who's a bit of a Nazi but working on it into diverse communities is questionable. Yeah. And it probably wouldn't be good for him either. Having just gotten out of a toxic belief system, he's going to be deeply skeptical of all ideologies. This In video is called How to World, um, Radicalize a Normie. Gabe could build for him, to use a therapy term, a holding space. Someplace private, physical or digital, where Gabe can work out his feelings, where he is both encouraged and expected to be better, but is not in the moment judged. That comes later. It is delicate and time-consuming work that should not be done in public, but we find these beliefs built up over the course of months or years tend to fall away very quickly with a shift of environment. Change Gabe's surroundings and you change Gabe. But instead, a lot of people who jump are functionally deprogramming themselves, which is working for a lot of them, but it's haphazard. And there are recidivists. If you don't personally know a Gabe or have training as a counselor, you may not be in a position to help him. Possibly there are things you can do to disrupt the recruitment process or That's prevent true. infiltration of spaces you're in. I'm looking into it. I agree, Noah. Talk to your mods. But elephant in the room, meaningful change Wait, what can what? do to disrupt the recruitment process or prevent infiltration of spaces you're in. I'm looking into it, but talk to your mods. But elephant in the room, meaningful change will require reform on the part that's true, honestly. Now, chat, whenever we changed our Discord's rules about a year or and a half ago, we made sure that our new rules didn't allow a lot of freedom for the edgy side of the community. Because when people say, oh, I just like edgy humor, they mean racism. That's, that's usually what they mean. And they just mean racism. And a couple of racist jokes here and there, oh, ha, it's all in harmless fun. It creates an environment where those ideas are somewhat safe to start flourishing. That suddenly becomes a little bit of like a, hey, I kind of, you know, what, what, what is the deal with black people? And I don't want to create an environment where where those ideas, it's a little Petri dish, you know? It's a Petri dish where bacteria can grow. I don't want to create a little Petri dish for racism in my Discord server. Part of platform holders. Tools to disrupt this process already exist and are being used on groups like ISIS. But they're not being used on the alt-right because they try oh so hard not to get classified as terrorists. And also any functioning right there, because they shit. try- this shit, the crusade meme. Oh, it's so, it's just a crusade meme, Deus Vault. Why do you only see this meme with racist white dudes? It's not just like, oh, the crusades were so awesome. You know, that part where we killed everyone and enforced our religion on them? That was so funny. Like what, what's the joke there? Oh, they were fighting for glory and God, okay? I need you to know, racist white boys, I need you to know, you will never get to ride a horse into battle and kill natives to bring God to the savages. It will never happen happen you will not dismantle an empire with blood and blade you are overweight and in your late 20s i owe so hard not to get classified as terrorists and also any function or your 15th anti-radicalization policy would require banning a lot of conservative politicians so there's that but what makes our story better than theirs is that the fight for social and economic justice though it is long and difficult and frustrating Among when it works Among it fulfills goose. the promise the right can't keep it materially makes people's lives better i am not prone to sentimentality or to giving these videos happy endings but one thing we have that the alt-right doesn't is hope true and that's not even a meme <laughs> that's not even a meme the self-isolating ideologies are built on personal fear and despair. That was a good fucking video. I like this channel a lot. No offense to this guy that made this video. Amazing. Upvote, yada, yada. I am not big on political content being fed to me anymore. I used to be. But as a result of me being out of the pipeline now, I like to form my own ideas and read my stuff as I choose. Something about being forced to be informed is just not healthy. It doesn't feel like I'm actually being informed. I like that a lot. That was really good. That was 41 minutes that we turned into two hours.